Hello everyone, my name is Amelia Clementi. I am a Master of Science student at the School of Population and Public Health at the University of British Columbia. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to present at the 29th Annual Canadian Conference on HIV and AIDS Research. Uh, the title of my project is Using Population Level Latent Class Analysis to Classify People Living with Hepatitis C in British Columbia for Targeted Program Planning. And if you have any questions or uh, comments, uh, please email me or reach me on Twitter and my email and Twitter handle are provided below. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge and extend my gratitude to be here as a guest on the unceded and traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. I have no conflict of interest to disclose and these are my acknowledgements, um, the BC Hepatitis Testers Cohort Team, um, the BC CDC, uh, University of British Columbia, uh, thank you so much, and thank you to the people of British Columbia whose data are integrated into the BC Hepatitis Testers Cohort and for whom this research is intended to benefit. Um, as a disclaimer, all inferences, opinions, and conclusions drawn in this presentation are my own and do not reflect the opinions or policies of the BC Ministry of Health and Data Stewards. So as an introduction, the World Health Organization is aiming for the global elimination of viral hepatitis as a public health threat by 2030. And in order to do that, that means that we need to increase the amount of treatment for hepatitis C. Um, and new direct acting antiviral medications have greatly simplified the treatment of HCV infection and became available in British Columbia in 2015. So direct acting antivirals have expanded HCV treatment access to include people living with HIV. And as of 2018, 5% of people currently living with HCV also are co-infected with HIV. And hepatitis C affects diverse populations that are often overlapping, such as people who inject drugs, baby boomers, gay bisexual men who have sex with men, and people from HCV endemic regions. Assessing patterns of shared characteristics among subpopulations or syndemic groups may allow for targeted program planning of HCV services. So for this analysis, the BC Hepatitis Testers cohort was used, and this cohort is a dynamic cohort including all individuals who ever tested for HCV or HIV or were diagnosed with HIV, HCV, HPV, or active tuberculosis in BC between 1990 and 2015 linked with data through personal health numbers on medical visits, hospitalizations, emergency department visits, cancers, prescription drugs, and deaths. So latent class analysis was used to group all people who had been diagnosed with HCV in the cohort, which was around 74,000 people, by sociodemographic and clinical characteristics that were relevant to HCV outcomes. So latent class analysis is a multivariate segmentation analysis that can quantify the composite effects of multiple variables, thus allowing for the scientific characterization and quantification of syndemics and their associated outcomes. So based on latent class analysis fit statistics, a population is divided into a certain number of subgroups or latent classes. And these latent classes can be studied to reveal hidden subgroups and characterize the heterogeneity within a population. To the best of my knowledge, this is the first study using data from one of the largest population-based studies in the world, including all HCV-diagnosed individuals within a province to characterize classes of people with shared characteristics. This study is also the first to quantify the syndemics of diseases and conditions associated with HCV infection at a population level. So the final model was chosen based on FIT statistics, epidemiological meaningfulness, and posterior probability for class assignment. Classes were named based on their defining characteristics. 
and among people treated, a multivariable um, multinomial logistic regression assessed providers' specialties and the likelihood of being provided treatment based on latent class and the specialty of provider. So a six-class model was found to be best fit. And the first group was named older people who inject drugs or older PWID. And this group was largely characterized by past injection drug use and opioid agonist therapy. Also was characterized by alcohol misuse and had the highest proportion of co-infections as indicated with a red percentage um, across the six groups. Uh, and 17% were co-infected with HIV. The next group was named Younger PWID, and this group had the highest proportion of recent injection drug use, mental illness, material deprivation, and younger people, with 10% co-infected with HIV. Uh, the next group was named Gay Bisexual Men Who Have Sex With Men, and this proportion, um, this group had the highest proportion of GBMSM, social deprivation, and no liver disease. And 7% of this group were co-infected with HIV. The next group was titled Urban Socially Deprived Baby Boomers. And this group was characterized by rural dwelling, uh, no identified injection drug use or OAT, social deprivation, and had the highest proportion of liver disease across the six classes. Only 4% of this group was co-infected with HIV. Rural baby boomers were almost entirely heterosexual, non-people who inject drugs who were never on OAT. This group had the highest proportion of material privilege and rural dwelling. And this group also had 0% um, of people uh, affected by HIV. The final group was named people of Asian backgrounds and this group was entirely, almost entirely comprised of people of East and South Asian ethnicity with no alcohol misuse or mental health diagnoses, urban dwellers and uh, social privilege. This group also had 0% uh, of people affected by HIV. Among people treated with direct-acting antivirals, provider specialties were analyzed based on the initiating HCV treatment provider. And this graph shows the probability of receiving DAA treatment by provider type for each latent class through a multinomial logistic regression. So GBMSM had the highest proportion of receiving DAA treatment from an infectious disease physician at around 33%. Also, it was interesting to note that the probability of receiving treatment from an infectious disease physician was higher for the three classes with higher proportions of people co-infected with HCV and HIV infections and was lower for the remaining three. This study provided a novel application of latent class analysis at a broader population level. Although latent class analysis has been applied to smaller cohorts of people affected by HCV, such as the Swiss HCV cohort in Switzerland, latent class analysis has not been used in a population that represents a whole province before. Um, so this is a really new uh, study. And this study could potentially advance the field of latent class analysis because we've shown this novel application of the methodology in grouping patients and looking at what type of physician provides their treatment. Allowing us the opportunity to empirically create specific profiles of patients by provider type. This work has also advanced the, BC, the work of the BC hepatitis testers cohort to determine um, these variables um, that can be used in other studies. In fact, new analyses are already being done using the latent class, uh, latent class variables, such as the mapping studies of the latent classes throughout BC to see where they're geographically located. 
Some limitations of this study include the use of administrative diagnostic codes to determine these variables, which may bias towards underestimating the prevalence of those less engaged in or able to access healthcare, and potentially misclassify some cases due to the sensitivity and specificity of the measures used. So in conclusion, six classes were identified, uh, younger p older p urban socially deprived baby boomers, rural baby boomers, GBMSM, and people of Asian backgrounds. And these classes had distinct characteristics and were prescribed by different provider types. These findings suggest that HCV services should not be uniform, but rather tailored to meet certain patient groups, shared or collective needs. People living with HCV have varied levels of material and social poverty, access to healthcare, mental and physical well-being, age distribution, and places of re residence, among other factors. My findings suggest that certain services relevant to certain subgroups could be co-located in order to streamline testing and treatment for groups in locations that are proximal and convenient. And this is in line with microelimination studies that have been previously conducted. Classifying uh, populations into distinct groups can offer both a cost-effective strategy for the elimination of HCV and more individualized care for patients. And finally, statistical grouping methods can be valuable but should not be rolled out without input from the populations they are meant to serve. Thank you so much for listening and please let me know if you have any questions.